Hey guys, welcome to this two-part video series on how to use Photoshop's AI generative tool to blend between textures and how to use it as a matte painting workflow. So part one, we're gonna talk about how to use multiple texture points and using generative AI to blend between those points. And part two, we're gonna use new camera projections onto some simple geometry from multiple camera angles to use generative AI to layer together 3D structure. And so let's get into it. So first I'm gonna talk about the basic functionality of this tool before I jump into the workflows that I think are actually the most useful. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the lasso tool up here and I'm just gonna select an area and to just show you guys how it works, do a generative fill and we'll just say rocks and we'll just let that generate. Now I think that because the images are, are trained on what probably seems to be a mostly realistic photos, those type of scenes are gonna benefit the most, I think, from this tool, rather than like trying to create a spaceship or something, or like some stylized fantasy castle or something like that. I don't think that those results are the best out of this tool, whereas things that are more texture-based or more realistic, especially depending on the scene, are gonna be a bit more useful. So you can see here, we've gotten three options that you can, you can jump between. And we do have some kind of simple reflections and some sort of shadows underneath the object as well. So it is understanding the light direction, which is interesting to see. If, if we go further with this idea though, I generated a palm tree and then what we can do and where I think this technique starts to become really useful, I'll mention it multiple times in this video, is where you cut the generative fill is actually probably the most important part. So if I were to cut this generative fill here and on the edge of the palm tree, if I start to make the cut here, it's going to try to blend on this dark edge and it's gonna to try to blend on any edge that it's touching. So keeping that in mind is actually how you can start to arc direct the way the generative fill is putting things together. And you can actually push this idea to the extreme, which I think is where this really becomes a tool rather than just like pressing something and getting something random out of it. So it, I, I did another generative fill, cutting the edge here. And if I load that, I load some more rocks, you see it blended it with more silhouetted objects and we start to get something more interesting. Again, we could do it again. So I did another generative fill in this area and I typed crashing waves or rocks and you'll see if I load that layer, it'll actually blend against the materials that it's touching. So that's really the most important concept as we get into this further is where we cut the generative fill. And, if, and you can even do multiple cuts. You could do a cut here, you could do a cut here and here and it's going to fill between these points. So where I think this idea starts to get more interesting is when you start stacking images together and then using the edge of the generative fill to drive the result. And so in this example, it's a pretty good example. If I just draw a circle here and I generate like an icy pond, by default, this is what you get. And you see, it doesn't really change the material too much. If I step through, we're not really seeing ice or anything that looks like a pond. And so if we took another picture of just an ice texture, and instead of generating just a whole circle, what we do is we generate on the edge of the image here. So I draw basically an alpha or a, or a mask here around the edge and I can hold shift and I can add here just to get the, the end of it here. So we're gonna generate across that, but not the center. We're gonna leave the center as it is and we're gonna leave outside as it is. And if you, if you do that, this is the result you'll actually get. And you can see it's doing a really nice job of actually blending the edges and it gives us three different options here if I click on this, you can see it's given us a few different options. Some are better than others. I think these ones are the best, but you can see these definitely work. Some of these actually have natural feeling blending on the edges. And if you don't like it, you can always generate again and you have more options. So this is another option on the top. And you see the top seems to have almost an erosion going down to it. And that is interesting. And you could definitely blend these two together or blend three together, however many you wanna do. But I think fundamentally the idea of taking these multiple patch points and cutting the edge of the generative fill into them is very, very powerful. This is another example where I took three different images and basically using generative fill to blend between them. And you can see the iterative process that this goes through rather than just pressing one button and everything is done. And you'll see how you can, you can direct it. So the first example I did was I just selected between the seams and I tried to generate something and I got this, which wasn't the best result. It wasn't really blending that well. And the part of the reason I think this is is because it was seeing the white edge. Remember, the generative fill always looks at all of the edges it's touching. So rather than just cutting on the edges, I did another fill that kind of went all the way around. And this is better, but you know, it still has this kind of weird, like it's not blended here. And so that wasn't exactly the best result. You can step through and that 
some of this area works, some of these wet rock areas kind of work. But basically, I just change the mask again to try again where it's generating. Maybe you just need a little bit more on the outside or maybe you need to cut further into the image when you generate. So those are the kind of experiments with the, the mats you can do. And so this is one of the results that I got. And I thought this looked pretty good on the right side. The, the water starts to blend in. It starts to look a little bit more natural. On the left side, it looks it's still very sharp. And it's, it's done a, a decent job at blending the edge, I guess, hiding it. But it doesn't feel like a very natural transition. So the next step in this process is to start to implement a bit of traditional compositing techniques to get this blend to work a bit further. And so what we can do is do a brightness and contrast and just paint it in on these rocks. And that's just going to darken them a bit more to make them a bit more wet looking. And also we can adjust the color just a tiny bit to add a bit a little bit of blue, which these rocks have, and that might just help the transition a bit further. Now, if we do a generative fill on top of this, that darkness that we adjusted is actually going to help it understand that this blend is going from one to the other. And so if we do a generative fill, remembering to make the edges touch on some of the areas. So if I cut it here, and I cut it somewhat into the other center material, it's gonna blend between all those areas. And if we enable that, we get a result that's like this. And we can see the scale of the rocks is even transitioning a bit better here. And so that's much more of an interesting result than the result we had before, which was like this. So we see, we see we've, we've progressed it further. Now, it has created these two odd looking rocks, which is not really a problem. We can just circle them out and generate a fill and get texture that is not going to be like that. So this is a much more interesting result. Now taking this concept further, we could even raise the water level into this if we wanted. So the way we could do that is to take clone stamps of this water and just put it in a, a few key areas and we'll fill between those areas. So if I enable this layer, which I've done that, I'll just zoom in so I can see it here. All this is is a clone stamp. We just grabbed a few areas from up here. So I enable and disable, you see just a few dots of clone stamped texture. And for the generative fill, what you want to do is make sure the edge that you're cutting on is touching the water over here. And we're going to keep the centers of those clone stamps. So in other words, we'll circle it like this. And then we'll use, if you hold Alt, you can subtract out the selection of the centers of these, these patches that we've created. So I'll keep those areas the same. And if we generate fill, it, it's going to keep, it's going to try to blend with these multiple blend points that we've created and the edge around. So if I enable and we see what that did, that is the result. And you can see the reflection of the water has been raised and it looks like more is underwater relative to the whole picture. So that's a way we can use multiple generative fill points and textures from different angles to just blend upwards. And if we go back to our original result, this was our original picture and this is what we've gotten out of it. So really, really useful, especially for matte painting workflows. And in the next video, you'll see how we can apply this with multiple camera projections and we can take this to the next level by projecting it out in 3D. So if you want to see that video, make sure you hit like and subscribe and that will be posted soon.